the size of the abdomen on this specimen here. It's a female. I can tell by her stout claws, the thumbs, what I call the thumbs actually, up front there. But another giveaway is the size of this abdomen. It's quite thick and so I'm certain that relatively soon she's going to drop an egg sac. They extrude all of their eggs into a pouch that they hold under their abdomen. Take some video of that at some point soon, I'm sure. Got a small water dish in here. I usually reserve this particular container for some imperfect specimens that I get in from time to time. But I've put this female in here so that you can see what a gravid female looks like. And also, more than likely, we'll get her to take a drink here very shortly. You can see her exploring this habitat with those antenniform legs. Just kind of getting a feel for the spacing. They don't see particularly well, of course. And so she's just feeling her way around. There she is, just starting to tap the water. We'll see if she's thirsty. She knows it's there now, but she might be a little disoriented or uncomfortable with her surroundings. A thirsty vinegarine will rarely miss the opportunity to take a drink. I'll show you here about vinegaroons. I've just put together this tank. It's just a tank I've used for many different things over the years. It's not really a display tank, just entirely functional. You can see the depth of the soil in there. It's soil mixed with sand and some coconut fiber. And I've constructed what I hope will be used as a burrow for this female because she is quite plump going to feed her up a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure that she's going to wall herself off into this burrow that I've constructed for her. Vinegaroons are well known for redecorating their cages. She will probably change things in here about a hundred times over before she settles on how she wants it to be exactly, but given the raw materials to do so, they will do what they need to do to make themselves feel comfortable. <clears throat> so this is a female. You see those stout thumbs? The pinchers are sort of like scorpions, but they almost have two places where they can pinch. And so those stout thumbs are an indication of a specimen being female. She's not coming off of my hand quite as easily as I had hoped there. I want to show you a male. Well, we'll leave her on the hand here for a moment. That's just how it goes sometimes, and maybe this will work out better anyway. This here is a male, and I'm relatively sure that this female is already fertilized. And I'll just take one more look at her thumbs there, those stout, pointy, thorn-like. There's three of them. You can see they're on the right one, and the bottom one is the one that we're looking at. In the male here, that same process, that same part of the appendage is considerably longer and more narrow. So, female, pointy, more like a thorn. And these ones here, longer and narrower. The pedipalps themselves look longer in the male, too, almost making more of a heart shape with his. 
and then of course the thickness of her abdomen compared to his sort of long and narrow and then more rounded Take her off of my hand. Sometimes it's easier than you want it to be. She sort of fell. So she's going to explore this new home and she's going to do a lot of digging. She will probably utilize the depth. She may bring more over from this side here, make it deeper over on one side. She may move these rocks or take all of the dirt out from under them. But she will at some point sort of igloo herself off and will be completely covered with dirt probably. They don't always do that. Um, I've had vinegaroons shipped to me before in the past in 8 ounce deli cups and uh, they have dropped their, their egg pouches, the transparent balloon-like membrane that the eggs are then uh, dropped into. You'll see that underneath her abdomen, she'll sort of walk around or even sort of stand tall. She will lift her abdomen up in the air. So. Vinegaroons are a type of arachnid. They're not scorpions and they're not spiders. Something completely different called whip scorpions. You see the whip there at the back. It's a sensory appendage. It's covered in fine hairs. They detect information about the world around them with those hairs. Of course they have eight legs like all arachnids. And these front two are modified. They work very much like antennae, so this animal uses the sense of touch to hunt rather than eyesight. And so I've just put it in there for the first time into this new environment, and so it's a little disoriented, but Things may happen, and they may happen quickly. Of course, I'm going to expedite the situation here a little bit by bringing the roach closer to the vinegaroon because you guys don't want this video to last an hour, right? There. <laughs> that was a really boring capture. Sometimes the chase is much more entertaining than that and the capture is much more entertaining. Millions of years of evolution, they make it look so easy, don't they? And so you see uh, Svenigarun is going to make quick work of this dubia cockroach. We'll do another feeding demonstration because that wasn't very impressive. Vinegaroons, they really are harmless. I've actually never had one pinch me, and you can see that they will take quite a bit of handling. I'm actually holding it rather firmly between my fingers here. They're called vinegaroons because they can spray out a liquid that's very similar in smell to vinegar and it's chemically very similar to I believe the chief 
ingredient in it is acetic acid. There's a few other little things, but unless you get it in your eyes or your nose or your throat, it's not really anything to worry about. Um, trying to detect whether I'm feeling this specimen spraying on me or not. It's almost more of an odor. It's almost more of a mist or a gas than it is a liquid, although you can see online on YouTube some videos where they use a special kind of paper to, that reflects the the liquid being sprayed, but um, sometimes it's very hard to get them to even do it. Um, they will kind of shake their tail, just vibrate it really fast back and forth when they do it. And uh, it can be pretty strong smelling. There are some species that uh, the uh, the chemicals can actually cause some damage to your hands. Um, some of the Asian ones, I think Typo peltis is the genus. I've had them before and I was more careful in handling them. A little bit more concerned than I am with these US ones. Vinegaroons have recently been separated into three species here in the United States. There's the Florida uh, type locality, there's the Texas ones, and there's the Arizona ones. They used to be Mastigoproctus giganteus, but they split them into three species pretty recently here. I think that took place in 2018, probably 2017. Time flies, you know. Finnegaroons, another name for them is Whip Scorpion. Europidgy is the more scientific name for the class of them. The class arachnids, Europigi is the order. They have some less commonly used names. Grampus is one I've heard for them. Not to be confused with Krampus from Christmas. And let's see, they have also been called vinegarones instead of O O N, it's O N E. But really very gentle creatures, very intimidating looking, but harmless to people. I don't know anybody that's ever been sprayed in the eyes by one of these, but I imagine that doesn't feel very good. That's a pretty typical feeding response there from a vinegaroon. This vinegaroon, you can see, has some physical challenges. It's missing its tail and it only has one full front whip there, one of those antenna form legs. Some people call the tail the whip, some people call these two front appendages, appendages whips. Um, this one is also missing part of the front right whip. And so you can see that it was still very effectively able to feed. They are leggy arthropods, six walking legs, two antenna form legs, and then typically that long tail. What is that? Nine leggy <laughs> thin appendages that have the possibility of getting damaged either by predators or on older specimens. They just wear out over time as the specimen ages. Nature can be cruel to them, and we just provide the best possible home that we can for them, but you can see that they fend for themselves very well. And this isn't a mature specimen, it's a smaller one. Hello there, friend. It should, through a molt or maybe two, regenerate a little bit of that front whip. It's unlikely that the tail will come back. It's totally just a nub but it will live a long, healthy life. Even without my help, it would. It's detecting one more roach there. Let's see. Let's see if it goes for it.